I need to report that I was extremely enthusiastic while watching the first season of this animated series, except for the ending. As far as I understand, the finale seems to have been written after the writers said, the series is going great, let's drink together tonight. So, in this video, while I recount the story of Primal from beginning to end, I will also touch on some theories and those strange creatures. First of all, I need to say that this production, which tells its story solely through visuals, is incredibly captivating. The person behind this creation is Jendi Tartakovsky, the director of Hotel Transylvania, The Flintstones, The Powerpuff Girls, and Puppy. Anyone who has watched these knows how great they are. This production, Primal, tells the adventures of two prehistoric characters. As the name suggests, Primal reflects the primitive life and the challenges of that era in its first season. Don't approach this work with prejudice. Don't let the absence of dialogue make you think it can't convey emotions. The story begins as follows. In the past, when he was just a child, tigers attacked his tribe and killed many members. The chief of the tribe, whom I assume to be our hero's father, dies during this attack. Our protagonist, overwhelmed by rage after this horror, attacks the tiger pack. After killing many members of the pack, our hero is declared the leader by his tribe, and his life begins. He grows up and starts a family. Our hero, a primitive man from ancient times, is trying to fish by the lake. Using the wait and catch method with his spear, he catches fish. However, he is then attacked by a giant crocodile. As you can understand from this, the creatures are enormous. While trying to take his catch home, he is visited by a pterosaur, another of the era's gigantic predators. From this, we infer that the story takes place 70 million years in the past. After escaping this incident and heading home, he suddenly hears a woman's scream. Dropping his fish, he starts running. When he arrives home, he finds that his wife and two children have been killed by three dinosaurs. Stunned by the horror and hatred of the scene, he attacks in a fit of rage. Though he wounds them, he must accept the fact that his family is dead and heads to the edge of a cliff. He contemplates suicide, but as the sun rises, he changes his mind. From the image of his family in the sun, we understand that he had a son and a daughter. Choosing to continue his life, our hero decides to hunt a dinosaur he sees by the stream. However, when he enters its cave, he sees its two offspring and softens as it reminds him of his children. Suddenly, the three dinosaurs that killed his family enter the cave. The dinosaurs start attacking each other, and our hero joins the fray because the creatures that slaughtered his family are right in front of him. The mother dinosaur and the man defeat the three creatures, but the real problem is much bigger. The dinosaurs they killed were only juveniles. Their mother is an even larger creature. During the chaos, the giant mother devours the other offspring. An intense struggle ensues. With the man's help, the giant mother is killed, but both characters are now left without families. This is where the entire adventure begins. The third episode, A Cold Death, was one of the most impactful for me. In this part, winter has arrived and our two characters are trudging through a storm. In another scene, we see a herd of mammoths moving together. Among them is an old and injured mammoth. This mammoth, trying to move at the back of the group, falls far behind and loses the herd. I initially guessed that it was heading towards a graveyard because modern elephants have a similar graveyard and come there to die. Returning to the story, as the mammoth tries to descend into a pit, it is attacked by the human and the dinosaur. The mammoth suffers great wounds and dies. The human takes its meat and fur and continues on his way. Shortly after taking shelter in a cave, we encounter a very intriguing scene. A herd of mammoths returns to search for their lost member, but these creatures are quite different and large. The mammoth with a strange mark, which I assume to be the leader, examines the body of the deceased animal. Seeing that one of its enormous tusks has been removed, the leader mammoth follows the tracks in a rage. It's quite strange that they would embark on such a mission as if they weren't the ones who left it behind in the previous episode. Returning to the story, the cave is raided and a fight breaks out between the two groups. The large mammoths have a numerical and physical advantage. Our two characters are nearly defeated, but the fight ends after they return the tusk to the leader. The mammoths leave with the tusk. 
The scene that impacted me the most was the group's behavior as they brought the tusk to the graveyard, performing what seemed like a burial ritual and placing the tusk in the graveyard. This scene deeply moved me and allowed me to delve even further into the depths of this animated series. In the fourth episode, we see a small pack of dinosaurs attacking our heroes. Outnumbered and at a disadvantage, they try to hide by entering a field. This part is important because the field acts as a sort of boundary. Beyond this boundary lies the territory of a bat swarm. As the team fights this swarm, the human character is taken by a bat to its cave. Our dinosaur attempts to climb up to rescue the human, but can't make it, so he comes up with a clever plan. Pretending to be dead, he gets the bats to carry him to their home. Honestly, I must say it was a very ingenious plan. The bats carry the dinosaur to their home, but there's a problem. A gigantic spider inside the cave. While the dinosaur and the spider battle, the human frees himself from the cocoon he is trapped in. Once free, the human joins his dinosaur friend in attacking the spider, and they defeat it. However, this angers the bat swarm, leading to a counterattack. At this point, the boundary they crossed earlier saves their lives. The bats and the small dinosaurs kill each other, allowing our two heroes to escape. The scene ends like a cowboy riding into the sunset. When we reach the fifth episode, things get much deeper, leaving us wondering, what is happening now? Everything starts calmly and peacefully until the dinosaur suddenly goes missing. While following its drag marks, we are suddenly knocked out by a blow to the head. A very strange group of monkeys has tied us up, and the priest, whom we assume to be the leader of the group, starts mumbling something and calls forth gorillas. After gathering in the middle, the gorillas wait a bit and then start a relentless fight. In this battle that continues until only one remains, the seemingly weak gorilla drinks a strange liquid and becomes even stronger. I have no idea what that liquid is, but we realize things are getting weird starting from this episode. A super strong gorilla fights the dinosaur. Just as it's about to kill the dinosaur, the human escapes and drinks that strange liquid, leading to a boss fight. Considering the strength the gorilla gained from just a sip of that liquid, think about what happens when the human drinks the whole thing. Not only the two of them, but all the monkeys attack the human, but to no avail. The human becomes so powerful that the scene turns into a slaughterhouse. Honestly, I felt relieved during this scene because it was like a stress release. However, after everything is over and the human returns to normal, he goes to check on the dinosaur to see if it is still alive. Seeing the dinosaur coughing up blood makes him sad, and he decides not to leave it no matter what. Since the sixth episode is connected to the fifth, I'll continue. The human hides the sick dinosaur in a cave and tries to take care of it. He faces many challenges until it gets better. The scene where he makes brass knuckles out of those bugs left me in awe. I was standing and applauding the episode, thinking, what creativity? The seventh episode made me go, what's happening? For one, the episode is truly terrifying and poignant. I felt tense throughout with each frame filled with horror and death. In short, in this episode, every place we think might be a zombie is covered in pus, and a small dinosaur takes a bite out of a massive dinosaur. Afterwards, the other dinosaur gets sick over time and turns into a zombie dinosaur itself. After killing all their friends, the curious human and dinosaur look around and say, what happened here? While they're surveying the area in shock, they're suddenly attacked by the zombie dinosaur, leaving them bewildered. As the human and dinosaur flee with the zombie chasing them, they bump into something and get stuck. The only part I laughed at throughout the episode was when they emerged from the cave, both looking at each other as if to say, did we die? However, it's quickly evident that they didn't, and the chase continues. But this part really tore at my heart because I think this is where the true horror lies. As they pass through a crater filled with lava, we watch in horror as the ground collapses, causing the burning zombie to flail wildly. Not just us, but the human and our dinosaur friend as well. The look on their faces in this scene was as terrifying as the appearance of this man's face. Honestly, I can say that this episode has become a favorite for me. When we reach the eighth episode, we encounter some extremely bizarre events. Let's call them a group of witches. They tie up the man they've captured and perform a ritual. 
A few minutes later, as another witch undergoes a strange transformation, the man withers away and surrenders his life. The shape-shifting woman suddenly becomes pregnant and a child is born. Afterwards, she hands the child over to these ghostly women. At first, I thought they were going to eat the child, but later I realized they were delighted. I guess the cave dwellers of that era don't pay attention to them, and these witches can't conceive children on their own, so they resort to this strange method. Strange situation, indeed. Anyway, moving on, our human is captured and bound just like before. However, these women have incredible powers. They can stop time, rewind it, and hypnotize. Using these powers, the woman first controls the dinosaur she hypnotized. By stopping time and looking into past lives, she examines how the human and the dinosaur met. He is deeply affected by this because he has experienced a similar situation himself. At the evening ritual, she orchestrates an assassination attempt, allowing the duo to escape. However, she sacrifices herself in the process. The scene where she reunites with her daughter in heaven was quite touching, I must say. Nevertheless, it seems that this won't be the last time we see these ghostly women. We haven't seen the last of them in later stages. The ninth episode was literally soul-crushing for me because it featured a creature that can kill any living being with a single strike, along with the horrifying scenes it caused. This episode was filled with stress for me, and the worst part is that there's no sight or indication of the creature. I only hear the screams of horror and death. Afterwards, we see the corpses it leaves behind. It seemed like it was doing it not to hunt, but to kill. Let me summarize it for you. Just like this human, we don't know what it is, but the dinosaur knows and fears it. When the human tries to pursue it, the dinosaur stops him. Later in the night, they realize that the weakness of the dinosaur that attacked them is fire. Prior to this, the episode featured giant trees being knocked down with a single blow, piercing screams, and its extreme speed, which even frightened me, not just the human and the dinosaur. By the way, the brave dinosaur actually survives here, but it chooses to follow the human. This situation reminded me of a beating I received in high school. If there is ever a live broadcast, I'll tell you about it. But hats off to you, Dino. Returning to the story, the duo coincidentally discovers that the dinosaur is afraid of fire and surrounds it with fire, causing it to burn to death. At this point, I was literally waiting for the mission complete message. These guys are progressing through their missions like clockwork, but I can't predict where they'll end up. The tenth episode felt like the brain death of the series to me, as it made me wonder, we were in the Stone Age, when did we suddenly transition to the Middle Ages? It revolves around our hero encountering a woman while fishing in the lake, and the subsequent events of spending time with her and her abduction. The woman, whose name we learn is Mira, is captured by people whom we think are Vikings while she is still a captive. Later, Mira, who escapes from the Vikings, meets our hero. From this point on, I'll give a brief summary as things unfold quickly, because the second season saddened me greatly. In the second season, our hero tries to build a vessel similar to the ship he saw at sea. It's more like a raft, to be precise. Setting sail with this makeshift raft, our duo doesn't make any food, water, or a sail. After a while, they find themselves stranded in the middle of the sea. Trying to hunt under challenging conditions, the duo struggles to survive. Suddenly a storm hits, tearing the raft apart and separating our duo. When they wash ashore, they can't find each other. Our dinosaur finds himself a companion, and so does our human. Meanwhile, the human, with a severely injured arm, is treated by other members of the tribe. The crackpot woman, whom I think is a healer, yelling at each other and smearing dung on the man's arm, made me burst into laughter. As time passes, the man's arm heals and he becomes romantically involved with other dinosaurs. However, after the dinosaurs attack the tribe and deaths occur following the brawl, the situation becomes dire. Our dino's sweetheart dies and they move away from the area. Shortly after entering a cave for shelter, Vikings arrive, leading to a fight. Realizing that the ones who kidnapped Mira are among the Vikings, they pursue them. In this part, they both find Mira and brutally kill the Vikings. As they depart from the area, the leader of the tribe arrives at the scene to find his wife and child dead. He sets out for revenge with his son. 
I'll skip to the fifth episode here because the main part of the theory is somewhat like a finale. So, in the final part, the Vikings find our heroes and engage in a battle. The father, who loses his son, disappointingly throws himself into the waters. Meanwhile, our dinosaur lays eggs while awaiting death. Angels descend from the sky and reach out to him. Just as he's about to leave, Hell's demons drag him underground, and a strange entity, whom we think is the devil, gives him powers. After saying, go, take your revenge, our Viking becomes a demon. In the midst of this, eras get so intertwined that even nations clash. This woman, whom I believe to be Cleopatra, attacks each nation and gathers the spoils. Our dino and human fight alongside her as captives. Time swiftly passes, yet the wars do not cease. One day, just as they are about to be killed, they are rescued by the executioner, and civil war ensues. Amidst the chaos, Cleopatra dies, and our heroes escape, embarking on a journey. However, a demon viking follows them. Our human, who arrives in Mira's lands, is unhappy because they lack a partner. Unable to express their love for Mira, the human falls into depression and etches their own story onto the wall. But in the midst of this, the demon viking arrives and they battle. Though the human fights, they sustain grave wounds and are on the brink of death. As they die, Mira joins them to bring them happiness. And thus, as our hero dies, years pass, and Mira and the children ride on dinosaurs, concluding the tale. If you're wondering how we ended up with such a bizarre ending, let me tell you. By the way, I'm not thrilled with the ending either, but what's being conveyed is the nature of humanity. Our hero dies, and years go by. Mira and the children ride on dinosaurs, and the story ends. If you're wondering why the film ended in such a ridiculous manner, the reason is simple. By nature, humans know they will die and leave behind remnants in history and the world. This can be interpreted as the continuation of their lineage or leaving behind displays by drawing on walls. It's an innate instinct for humans to reproduce and pass on their DNA to the next generation. DNA seeks to exist, but the lifespan of the current body is not conducive to it. Our human fought throughout their life, but also didn't neglect to leave traces wherever they went. This is a situation that arises instinctively. Their closeness with Mira undoubtedly includes love, but still our friend wanted children. Despite the difficulties, our character managed to achieve this. Now, let's address the seemingly irrelevant fifth episode. The theory in this section is simple. No matter how modern humans become, their instincts kick in under any threat and they resort to primitive fighting. Don't interpret primitive fighting as spears and clubs. It means losing control, losing empathy, and fighting to survive. Those who watched this section thought very superficially. If only the commentators could think a bit more deeply. Charles's theory is proven by the series of events. They regress through eras, from rifles to foot soldiers, from bows to spears, from spears to bones, and so forth. By the end of the episode, Charles's theory is proven. The screenwriter, in their own way, narrated Charles's theory as a work of art with this episode. Now, on to the strange creatures. Look at the origins of religions or the narratives of legendary stories. They always seem grand and exaggerated. Fighting giant serpents made of fire, creatures emerging from underground, angels, etc. These actually convey our character's exaggerated story to us. There are dozens of epics in mythology. Many of them seem unbelievable when we think of them as legends, but that's how epics are. There is indeed a real event, but it's embellished a bit. The characters become immortalized. I hope you enjoyed this video. We put so much effort into it, so I hope to receive a comment and a like. Until my next video, take care of yourself. Goodbye.